Hello, I am here with Exodus 3. Dun, dun, dun. No, that's good. Moses and the burning bush. Now Moses was tending to the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Hebron, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And, he, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the opposition of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt, hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up from that land, good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, Armenites, and the Pesitites, and the Hevitites and the Josetites, Jebatites. Je now, therefore, behold, the cry of the city of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the opposition with which the Egyptians oppose them. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. So he said, I am cert I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign that you, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on his, this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thou sh you shall say the children of Israel. I am, has, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God to sa said to Moses, thou sh you shall say the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of, I of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to, the, to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Armenites, the Pesitites, the Hivites, the Jebatites, whatever, Jebeses, I don't know. <laughs> I can't pronounce that name. Uh, the land flowing milk and honey, then they will... Heed your voice, and you shall come, and you and the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now please, let us go three days journey in the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I, turn the page, but I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which will do, do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go, you shall not go empty handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her 
who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold, clothing, and you shall put them on your sons, on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptians. So anyway, that is chap, uh, Exodus 3, and God spoke to Moses telling him that he needs him to go up to Egypt and take care of, uh, help his people. Of course, Moses probably at the beginning was like, well, you heard what he said, who am I? Indeed. Who, and basically he said, who am I that I should go up? So God picked Moses to do this task. Yeah, he did, probably did say, probably did whine and cry about it. Moses did first going, eh, why me? Why couldn't you pick anyone else? So, <laughs> so I don't think Moses said it like that, but you know, you get the gist of what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway... Uh, layer down nexus, you'll see the miracles that God does to Egypt. Um, and he hardened Egypt, uh, the king of Egypt's heart. And the reason why he did that is because he was punishing because of the kid, what the king did to the Israelites. Um, God was doing more damage to him. Than he did the Israelites. Basically, in one of the scriptures, God says, I am vengeance. Therefore, I am vengeance. In other words, he, like an Exodus here, where he took care of the king of Egypt, he was having, he was doing vengeance on the king of Egypt for what he did to the Israelites. Um, and we'll go through that more, but you'll find out that it wasn't very pretty for the Egyptians, what God did to them. Um, but yeah, they deserved what they got because of what they did to the Israelites. They deserved it. So, and God, God is the one that judge, jury, and executioner. No human is judge, jury, and executioner. God is the last say of who lives and who dies. Um, yeah, and this is the Old Testament. I mean, the laws from the Old Testament, like the Ten Commandments, still apply. The only difference is, compared to the Old Testament and New Testament, is Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So now we can go to God and say, ask for forgiveness when we sin. Um, that's the only difference because back then children of Israel, I mean, they messed up royally. Uh, they were punished very severely by God. We don't have to worry about that these days that happening because God sent his only son to die on the cross to save everybody because he knew that he knew that we weren't perfect, that we mess up and he created us, and I know for a fact that he did not want to destroy us. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off topic here. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just lift up the Exodus 3 and the wonderful book of Exodus that we do, talking about Moses, a great man who came, became a great man in your eyes, Father, who did everything by your law, who did every, who, who did the, who, uh, put the, the, who created the Ten Commandments, but actually you created the Ten Commandments for us to follow, Father, but who brought them down to the Israelites to give them, to show them that these are the Ten Commandments that the Israelites were supposed to follow. And we know for a guarantee that they did not follow them 100% of the time. They went astray, and we know that we go astray too. We've broken several of the commandments, 
but we know that we can come to you and ask for forgiveness when we break those commandments, Father. And then make sure that we don't break them, try to not break them ever again, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. So I got a little off topic there. But anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.